Uh, first off, I, I'd, I'd love to uh, say congratulations to uh, Loyola and uh, Coach Toomey. Um, they are a very worthy champion, being the number one seed um, and number one ranked team. Uh, they proved it uh, all year, and they proved it again today. Um, so uh, they deserve that, that championship, and uh, congratulations to them. They, they were very good today, and uh, just m much like they've been all year. Um, so. First off, want to make sure they get their due. We, they have our um, total respect. Um, and then after that, I just want to, you know, just thank our players um, and for everything they've done this year in terms of representing the University of Maryland, um, what they've invested, the sacrifices they've made, uh, what they've done for each other. Um, obviously, thank them, our administration, um, and uh, especially our seniors. Um, you know, I think the hardest thing about losing this game is knowing that this group won't be together more than about 48 hours. And uh, it's such a, a great group of young men that, you know, I, I wish we had a couple more weeks uh, because it is a special group. And uh, we care about them deeply, and, and I'm not just saying that. It's just been a lot of fun being with them. So, um, again, thank you, team, um, and we're going to miss you. But uh, I think you made the state of Maryland proud, your university proud, um, and alums proud, uh, just in, in terms of your spirit, your heart, and your effort, and uh, your teamwork. Thanks, Coach. Questions for our student athletes? If you have microphone holders, please just uh, let me know. We'll get a mic to you. Uh, Zach Babo and Tim Cross. Um, Drew or Joe, can you guys speak a little bit to just um, what, what on offense in the second half you guys just couldn't really, I guess, get much going. It seemed like a lot of shots weren't finding the cage. Just it was was maybe happening there. Um, I, I think uh, they they did a great job on the defensive end, um, making us a little uncomfortable. And uh, when we got shots, opportunities, I think the goalie came up with uh, some good saves. Any other questions for our student athletes? Uh, Ed Lee for the Baltimore Sun. Um, Joe, can you just sum up your feelings about getting to this stage and, and not being able to walk away with the title? Um, <clears throat> I just want to say it's a huge honor to uh, play for the University of Maryland. Um, we, uh, we left it all out on the field today. Um, it, this has been one of the most rewarding experiences of my life uh, to be a, a part of a group of guys um, that can go through hard times and respond and grow and learn from experiences and make it to the national championship when many doubted us. I, I'm so honored to be a part of this team, um, but credit um, Loyola um, for their effort today. Um, they played. They played a better game, and uh, they were the better team on the field, and they won the championship. Um, so that's all. I'm Landon, can you talk about the loss of Jesse and, and how that affected the defense? Well, I think towards the end, we were definitely trying to pressure out because they had a lead. And when you lose a guy like Jesse, it just makes everything harder. I mean, he's all over the field, causing turnovers and stuff. So when we lost him, we've had some other guys. They've done well in practice and all year. So they knew they had their time to step up. And I think they did a really good job when they were in. And it just didn't work out the way we wanted it to this time. I guess uh, Joe or Drew again, as seniors, I mean, you guys don't get to walk with the title. but. You guys really helped reestablish, you know, Maryland back in top five kind of program, you know, in the championship in two years in a row. Can you get any kind of sense of perspective on that? Um, you know, I think um, you you come into uh, every season and your goal is to win a national championship and um, to play for the state of Maryland um, and to play for a university that. Um, loves lacrosse, uh, it's, it's an honor, it's awesome, um, and we can't
came up, you know, just short of our goal. And, but um, my hope is that um, our class and this team and that we established, you know, a legacy that championship, getting to the championship and winning the championship is the goal every year. And I hope that future Terps, um, when they come in, they know that that's the goal and that that's what they have to work for every year. And they have to put in the work because it's not easy. Um, but it's the most fun and awesome experience that, that I've ever had. Anything else for our student athletes? All right, thank you guys. If you want to head out, we'll take a few more questions for Coach. Uh, Lee Fine, so from NCAA.com. I mean, the loss notwithstanding, you must have some special feelings for Charlie and, and, and what this means to him. Uh, th there's not a better person out there than Charlie Toomey. Um, and his friendship has meant a lot to me long before this. Um, I mean, I've had holidays, you know, when I couldn't get home, and his, his wife has allowed me to, to be part of that, and his family, and, you know, that uh, that's something that uh, I will always appreciate. Uh, you know, you never like to lose, and, and my heart bleeds for, for these guys, and I know how much it would mean to our administration, our school, and our state, but if we're not going to win it, I just, I'm so happy for a guy that does everything the right way. Um, I mean, it's a first-class operation. He, he's, he's not allowed kids to play this year because they weren't doing the right thing in school. And, and he's, he's given those kids the discipline and life lessons that they're going to use for a long time. And he's stuck to his guns. And uh, even if it meant maybe hurting his team's ability to win games. And to have the courage to do that in, in, in a, a sport where sometimes people define you by wins and losses just speaks volumes to the type of person that he is. Another question about uh, Hawkins, obviously. Yeah, you know, Justin, uh, or Josh, sorry, I coached uh, Justin Hawkins. Uh, uh, but Josh is a guy that, you know, we had seen at one of our Harvard camps when I was up at Harvard, and I thought he was fantastic. And, you know, obviously for a number of different reasons, it just wasn't going to work out at Harvard. And um, he's just a terrific young man and, you know, made a couple calls to a number of different coaches and just said, hey, there's a guy that would be a terrific player, I think, potentially, but the type of young man you want in your locker room. Uh, I think he's, you know, he basically checks all the boxes. Uh, you can make the decision for yourself, but I'd certainly take a look because uh, I think this guy's pretty special. And uh, he certainly proved it today. He was outstanding. Coach, uh, Julian Nimble, Boston Will, just defensively, what, what did they do kind of differently? Or how did they kind of make that? You know, I think individually, they won the majority of the matchups. You know, we, we had a tough time getting leverage. Um, and. You know, that was one of our concerns coming into the year. You know, we, we aren't the fastest team. And, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why we, we, we really have to be, uh, we didn't have to have high attention to detail. We have to play at a good pace. We have to be strategic with picks to gain leverage. Because one-on-one, uh, uh, we're not the greatest dodging team. Uh, but we do have other skill sets, whether it's, you know, sharing the ball, uh, you know, the way we uh, have attention to detail with setting picks, uh, slipping, moving, cutting. Uh, so we, we, we really, it's better for us when we can get the defense rotating. Uh, we just couldn't get them rotating. And, and we would get to spots on the field, and especially at, like, you know, we drive up near goal line, we'd get close, and we would try to get a little leverage. They would slide, and, and, uh, or we'd get just a little separation and take a low angle shot, which is, is what we really didn't want to do. But I think when we got frustrated, um, you know, we resorted to, well, it was a shot. Or I got a slide, I thought something would be open inside, and uh, guys, you know, would come off like, I, I thought it was open or I heard something. And I just think, you know, it got a little bit difficult for us. And, and like anybody, you know, we, we, we were kind of, all right, well, let's press a little bit. And, and, and that's one of the reasons why we took the time out early when we did was just to have everybody take a deep breath, you know, relax. Uh, even at halftime, you know, it was a two-goal game. We were winning faceoffs, uh, so we were excited about that. Um, you know, we just needed to get more shots on goal and uh, and put them in good shots. So we just we felt like we were going to wash that first half away and, and know that if we could score and, and, and we handled the faceoffs, there was a good chance we could get a couple and, and maybe get the momentum and then maybe get them on the defensive. Final 
only Boston Herald. Uh, Coach, uh, Bernhard appeared to either hurt his right shoulder or possibly a concussion. Can you talk about the exact nature of the injury? Yeah, I, I'll be honest. I got sick in my stomach when I went out there. His eyes weren't open, and uh, uh, I, I kind of had to catch myself a little bit. Um, luckily, uh, we have a great trainer in, in Amelia Sussman, and, um, and the doctor was out with us as well, and uh, his eyes weren't open. Um, and then we just kind of waited, 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 and he came to. Um, so I would think he's definitely got a concussion. I, I'm just happy he was able to walk off. Um, and it looks like everything's going to be okay. We'll certainly keep an eye on him. Um, but he's a special young guy, and, uh, you know, we just want to make sure he's okay. Coach, you mentioned the, uh, the face-off stats is so heavily in your favor. So we all seem to do the same thing against Notre Dame, I guess. What was, what's happened in those plays where it seems like you guys are, are winning possession battles but not being able to convert? Or? Well, you know, there are times when we won the face-off yet didn't control the ball. So that's, uh, you know, we didn't handle the pressure really well. But when you have Hawkins out there um, and Ratliff out there, you've know, you got some pretty good athletes. And uh, that's part of what they do is they put your guys under pressure and they hunt you a little bit. Uh, and Dalton as well. And, and that's uh, Charlie, did, I thought, did an outstanding job. Uh, Charlie Rafa, yet, you know, again, showed his age a little bit at times. And, uh, you know, Charlie had shoulder surgery uh, and missed most of the fall, came back to since February. So he's still a work in progress, but he's certainly come a long way for us. And uh, uh, we're excited about what he can do in the future. Uh, but, you know, we needed to translate those uh, possessions into a good looks and opportunities. We just kept settling for, for C opportunities or, or maybe even C minus opportunities instead of you know really moving it and sharing it and moving it to get those A looks. And, and to be honest with you, when we did get some good looks, you gotta give the goalie credit. You know, he made some really good saves. He made all the saves he should and a few more. Generally, did it just seem like you guys had a tough shooting day? I mean, you said some bad angles, but even angles that were good seem like guys may weren't cannon shots that normally hit. Yeah, and you know, it's a, it's it's two things. Like, you gotta give Loya their due. I mean, they play great defense, they really played well. Um, did we have our best shooting day? I would say no, but I don't want to take anything away from them. You know, we, we you know, again, we shoot so well on, on Saturday, and then obviously, you know, today, just you couldn't seem to find the net. And that's the, the fickle thing about shooting. You know, we, we try not to get too much in the guy's head on where to shoot. Um, and then there are some days where, you know, the, the, the goal looks so big. And then there are other days where, like today, it just seems so small. And we weren't telling them this is where you need to shoot. You know, we just feel like sometimes you, you need to back off and let the guys shoot their best shot. But we had a tough time even getting on goal, you know, even at the end of the game. And the kids knew we needed to score. We just couldn't get it on goal. And sometimes the worst thing you can do is start yelling at the guys because then they get more tense and they start gripping their sticks a little harder. Is it one more? Uh, two, strip, two trips here. Um, what, what do you take from this, and do you use this as a, a learning lesson for the guys? Yeah, and that's what we talked about in the locker room. Um, you know, I, you know, just like I mentioned last year, I think it says a lot about the staff that, that was before me. They did Dave Cottle and Dave Slotkowski and, and Brian, uh, Brian Moran. Um, obviously, they left us a lot of good players, so they deserve a lot of credit for us being where we went to. Um, I thought the coaches did a good job. Um, uh, I, it's hard now because you you got to look at both ways. You're so close, and you, you're so close to tasting it, and you know what it would mean to these guys and, and everybody involved. Yet, you know, when you reflect back on where we started, and then all the adversity that we went through, um, I think we'll all reflect when the pain goes away and it gets it's not quite as new. What these guys did was pretty amazing. Um, you know, to, to, to lose so many guys. And, uh, you know, in the entire starting D, three out of our top four attackmen, to lose our best midi, Jake, um, to have, you know, Curtis Hurt at the beginning of the year. Um, you know, Nico, have a good year, but not maybe a Nico year, yet take it to the same place we went last year, just speaks volumes to the improvement these kids made, how hard they worked, the coaching staff, what they did. Um, I'm very fortunate because you're as good as your staff and, you know, hopefully, you know, the kids getting close will motivate them uh, to try to get back and, 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 and get it done. And maybe there's some confidence that's built up, um, you know, that, hey, you know what, it doesn't matter what happens to us, 
you know, we can make it back. And, and those are the, the life lessons that I hope the kids took, take away is, you know, we've had our moments where, you know, when things didn't look good, you know, when guys maybe weren't getting along or we weren't having good practices yet, guys kept the faith, uh, they stuck together, um, they, they really got what it meant at the end of the year, what it means to be a turf, what it means to sacrifice for each other, um, how important it was to, to play a certain way to represent our school, and uh, that legacy will be left for a long time. And uh, I, I know the kids want a title, um, but we want to make sure, especially as a staff, that we win a title and we do it the right way. And uh, we do it with guys that are doing it well in the classroom, off the field, and on the field. And, and that's what we're going to continue to do going forward, is we're going to do it the right way. And uh, we're going to work our butts off to get this thing done. Um, but I'm proud of this group with all the things going against them to get here. You know what? I, I just, I couldn't be more proud of them. And I'm just, I feel very lucky to have, you know, the, this year with them. I, I, I'm totally exhausted. And that's kind of the way the year's been. But I wouldn't trade for anything. Thank you, Coach.